Welcome to Talk Purpose and Truth with Eden and Kim, shifting you into higher consciousness. The show that elevates, uplifts, and encourages listeners to grow, heal, awaken, and evolve. Eden and Kim include bold topics, special interviews with inspiring guests, intuitive readings, channeled messages from beyond, including celebrities, hot topics to expand your awareness, and time for questions from the audience. Tune in for unprecedented truth, authenticity, on purpose discussions, and magical moments. Sarah Jack Bessie, and I'm excited to have her. Um, I'll welcome her in a second, but I want to say that I've had her. Um, work on a lot of projects with me over the years where she spoke at women's retreats. She taught her specialized Alexander technique that she teaches um, to a bunch of different women's events and women's circles that I've spoken at. Um, We've been at different events through the years together. We've hung out personally as soul sisters through the year. I remember through the years, I remember we even one time roller skated around this big park, like five miles or something like that. um, While Mm -hmm. talking about deep, spiritual metaphysical principles, of course. So welcome, <laughs> welcome Sharon. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's it's really interesting to reflect about uh, how long we've known each other and how many events we've been at together and, and roller skating and rollerblading together too. Right. How long ago was, I think the first time I met you was a PR seminar with Lisa Elia. Yeah, it was called Meet the Media. Do you remember what year that was? It would have been around 2010, 2011, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So ten it's been years. like 10 years at least. Gosh, that's crazy. Um, that was that was a helpful event. I learned a lot more about PR back then from that. <laughs> and look at you're using it now for us. I know. We're using <laughs> it in our podcast, but we're also helping and healing. So that's good. Yes. <laughs> um, so Sharon, how did you get started as a speaker? And you know what? I'm going to ask you all this at once, and I'm going to expect that you're going to remember all of this one <laughs> question. Okay. But I want to know how did you get started as a speaker, uh, and for and teaching the Alexander technique? Because mm-hmm. yeah. um, I know this is probably much more needed now than it has been maybe ever in our lifetime. Yeah. So we, I'm sure the audience would love to hear more about that te- technique. Yeah. You can share. Well, I. I found the Alexander technique. So in my in my one of my past lives, I did a lot of dance and choreography, and to, um, through that world, um, I, I had experienced a lot of pain in my body, like pain in my hip and pain in my low back. And at the same time that I was dancing and choreographing, I was working with little children with autism. We have to sit in their little teeny tiny chairs, so it was all curled up. And uh, it was very demanding work, very stressful. And I had this excruciating hip and low back pain that really made me think something is terribly wrong. And another dancer suggested that I try the Alexander technique. And in my very first session, I didn't understand what was happening, but in my very first session, all the pain in my body was gone. Mm. And I was like, this is unbelievable. And so I continued to take Alexander Technique lessons. This was down in San Diego. And um, there was a certain point about a month or two months into taking those Alexander lessons where I was like, I feel so much better able to deal with stress. I don't have pain. I need to share this with the world. Mm-hmm. And so then I moved to L.A. because there, was there wasn't a training school in San Diego. I moved up to L.A., and did a 1,600-hour, three-year program to be certified to teach the Alexander Technique. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's it's really in-depth, but just so remarkable. And what that training did for me was really teach me what I do unconsciously in my own body and with my breathing and how I, I stress and hold stress in my body and then how to release it so that I'm grounded, I don't have pain, I feel more confident, I feel more open, I feel more relaxed. And and I was like, "This this is what I need to share with the world. This is so important. So many people are overstressed, so many people are in so much pain, they need these tools. One question to intervene, is the pain that the Alexander Technique is it be, is it the pain that's related to emotional 
the the emotion emotions or is it also a physical something that's caused by something physical well i would say the the physical and the emotional are, are so interdependent so if someone is really upset about a life event and they're they're stressed about that event so they're sad they're angry there is going to be a manifestation a physical manifestation in the body that is paired with that emotion. So yeah. if someone gets mad, typically they tighten their neck and they throw their head forward and they pull their shoulders up and they tighten all of the muscles around the ribs, the lungs, the diaphragm. And if someone is in that emotional state all the time, it becomes a physical habit. Mm. So, so often in these, in my private sessions and my group sessions, people start to see the, the interrelationship of their own physical habits, slouching, clenching, holding, and their emotional habits. Okay. And as you start to unravel the physical habits, it creates more room in your ribs, your lungs, and your diaphragm so you can breathe more easily. And then your nervous system is calmer. Hmm. Wow. I'm learning. I didn't even know some of these things about you all these yeah. years. I, and I didn't realize you worked with um, children with autism. My ba- I don't know if you know my background. I taught special ed and worked with kids with um, developmental disabilities and autism and special needs and all that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 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 So that's fascinating. So going back to stress, um, what are you seeing right now with people? I think a lot of people call it overwhelm. What are you seeing right now? with people in the world, with stress, with your clients? And then what are some ways that you teach them to get rid of or deal with or overcome it? Well, first of all, I'd really like to say that we cannot get rid of stress. It's impossible to get rid of stress, but we can manage it more effectively by knowing our own unconscious response to stress. So in my work, we want to bring the unconscious into consciousness. And when people become more aware of how they respond to stress, like a lot of people clench their jaw or they, they, they crouch forward and they hold their breath when they're stressed out. And so heightening your awareness of how you handle stress and where you carry stress in your body is so important. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also I'd like to say 2020 and, and we're now moving into 2021 the events of this past year, it's not just one thing. It's like 10,000 things. Mm-hmm. Not only are people dealing with the stress of pandemic, there's, there's illness, there's isolation. Um, families are, are falling apart. And I mean, I, I feel okay to share this. Like even during 2020, like I am now dealing with a separation from my husband. And I think part of it has to do with the, the pressure mm-hmm. of, what's happening, what has happened with the pandemic. And and so I think we want to really give ourselves a huge break this year. There's just no way our nervous systems can, can really fully comprehend what has happened. Mm. So we really have to give ourselves a break. And in, in my work with my clients, whether it's corporate clients or individual clients, I like to bring an awareness to letting breath out it's so simple when you let breath out and there's a couple different sounds i use a couple different techniques i use one is uh, an awe sound like this when you let breath out of your mouth like that it automatically releases the jaw muscle and the jaw muscle is the strongest muscle in your body per square inch, your masseter. You also release the shoulders on that out breath. The, the ribs release on the out breath. You get rid of old stale air. So if you've been stressing and holding your breath and holding yourself like this, you have stale air with higher levels of carbon dioxide in your lungs. So when you let breath out, You let that old still air out and now your body is ready to receive calming, fresh oxygen. Mm. When you let breath out, especially on a little sound like that, like the whispered ah, Mm -hmm. sometimes I'll, I'll tell people to use an S sound like this. The S sound provides a little resistance and it slows your breath rate. 
when you're stressed, your breath rate increases and so does your heart rate. So when using a little bit of sound, the S sound provides some resistance. It slows your breath rate, which slows your heart rate. Mm -hmm. And your nervous system can shift from fight, flight, or freeze to rest, digest, and heal. Mm. So an awareness of your body is so important in dealing with high stress. And, and we don't want to like be hard on the body or, or be demanding on the body, but noticing where you hold stress and, and gaining tools to release it. Like a lot of people hold stress in their abdominal area. They tighten the belly and that will actually make your breath rate go up. You'll, you'll increase your breath rate, which will increase your heart rate, and you'll move into that fight, flight, or freeze state. So I, I love talking about breathing because it, it's such a doorway to not only feeling less stressed, but feeling well-being, uh, to finding your true powerful voice. Um, some people get a sense of like feeling um, maybe magical or mystical or like tapping into those you know higher states of consciousness and it's all through allowing our body to move freely and easily with our breathing mm. wow i love the s because it makes me think of like s you think of the word stress and so it's almost like you're letting out the stress <laughs> yes it's, a good, it's to make you remember when you're in a place of high stress. You're like, okay, at least I can remember that it starts with S. So I can do this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stress. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> oh, wow. All of it sounds like perfect for so many people. Do you have, are you seeing people on um, online right now on Zoom? I am. Yeah, I'm seeing people individually on Zoom. And then I'm also like my corporate clients. Are on zoom as well so i am leading groups of people through activities that relate first of all to the body so we have really bringing awareness to your body so that you can let go of tension and release holding that really um creates compression and pressure in the body mm -hmm. so emotional pressure and then talking a lot about breathing and letting breath out and then i'm also doing some um, mindfulness meditation with the corporate training as well. Okay. But you're seeing individual clients too? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So switching gears, um, talking about how people are uncomfortable with their bodies. There's a lot of people who have that and they, the people, they, they reject their bodies. They're unhappy. Um, how can we get confident and more comfortable and love our own bodies? This is such a passionate topic for me because I, oh, I think we hold on you guys. Oh, okay. Scott, we have to, we might have to do a retake. He just blew a fuse in the office. It's Mercury retrograde through resting, just laying down on your back. Resting is so good for your body image. The more we rest, the more we calm our nervous systems down, the clearer our thinking is about our body, the, the clearer our beliefs are, are about our body. And then, you know, choosing ways to move our body that are enjoyable. People often ask me, well, what kind of exercise should I do? And I'll say, what kind of exercise do you love to do? What do you enjoy? That's really important. And when you enjoy it, then, you know, you're, you're freer in how you move, you don't hurt yourself, uh, you're calmer, you're breathing better. Um, and then sleep. Sleep is so important. Um, if it's weight loss that you're interested in or any, anything else that you want to improve about your body, sleep is essential. Getting that rest, digest, and heal part of your nervous system working for you is so important. And of course, drinking water. Um, I have a habit that when I start to feel like I am annoyed or frustrated or mad, I'll go drink some water so that I'm, I'm cooling myself down. I'm hydrating myself when I have a heightened emotion, whether it's 
you know, some external situation or it's something that I'm going through with myself, I'll drink some water to cool myself down and to hydrate, to do something healthy in response to a negative uh, experience or a negative idea. You know, these are the only bodies we're ever going to get. We don't get another body. And so um, slowing down a little bit and, and creating, you know, affirmations that you want to tell yourself that you want to tell your body are so powerful. So, so those are some of my suggestions for beginning to, to love your body. And it's not about losing weight all the time. Sometimes it's really about soothing yourself and, and just feeling um, some calm in your own nervous system so that you can make healthy choices. <laughs> That's great. Very helpful. Yeah, I would say how would I think one of the things I hear the most and, and I, I really try to not do this refrain from doing this or correct myself if I do it. But women go in front of the mirror, and will think a negative thought about themselves. And so I make the rule of like, sometimes I have to go back to the mirror like four times. But I always leave the mirror with a positive thought. But how can we start becoming more loving of our body and accepting when we look in the mirror? Uh, you know, I, I don't think I spend a lot of time in the mirror, except if I put makeup on. <laughs> Maybe, like, let's spend less time in front of the mirror and more time, like, doing some kind of movement. Maybe dancing a little. Dance in front of the mirror. Like, play in front of the mirror. Do something fun in front of the mirror instead of having like that microscopic view of ourselves in the mirror. Um, every human being, if they put a microscope, they're going to find some flaw where we all have our own imperfections. And let's like take a step back from the mirror and make a funny face, do a jig, shake it out, maybe make a funny like one of the things, especially when I work with my acting clients, I have them do a lip flutter. So like a do a lip flutter in front of the computer in front of the mirror because what you're doing is you're loosening your lips the movement uh is opening the skin of your lips and your face do something silly in front of the mirror instead yeah i think we're all taking ourselves way too seriously and i love i love when celebrities go public with their so-called flaws or their human qualities like Chrissy Teigen recently showed scars from her endometriosis surgery and from you know trying to lose the baby weight and I know Demi Lovato has been really public with up and down weight loss weight gain as well as Kelly Clarkson and I think that's just so helpful because it makes us all go you know what it's actually better and more admirable to just own it and just own who we are and own every part of us and not look at it as, as labels like that that's good or that's bad you know yeah uh, i encourage everyone so everyone's been told suck in your gut suck in your gut suck in your gut well, when you suck in your gut you actually cannot breathe that well and then you have to pant so i'm always encouraging everybody let your belly go let your <laughs> let your breathing move your belly you actually have a more holistic movement. You breathe, breathe more deeply when you let go of your belly. And for, quite frankly, sucking in your belly isn't going to fix anything. It only stresses you out more. But when you let go of your belly, and I would say even like put your hands on your belly and like, you know, shake it and be like, I love my belly. Like, <laughs> fun. Let's do something fun and silly instead of like you're saying, we're taking ourselves so seriously. And, and I am not buying into this, this idea that we all need to lose weight. I don't think, I don't think it's that accurate. And I really think it's a way for a lot of companies to make money. I, I would say we can all let go of this idea that we all, this idea, this obsession that we need to lose weight. And let's just go do something fun and enjoy ourselves and play with each other instead. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think you'll burn calories that way exactly. too. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and de-stress. Exactly. And then when you have less stress, there's less cortisol. And, yes. And then your, your metabolism goes up. 
Yeah, so there's the answer to everything, to everybody, anybody who wants to get to their goal weight. <laughs> yeah, drop, the, it. drop it all, <laughs> drop the goal weight, drop it. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> be healthy. Go play. <laughs> you have to put it on Zoom with your girlfriends. Yeah, because we can't do it in person yet. So how can we confidently shift to positivity and use our difficulties as an awakening awakening in this new year? Yeah. You know, the, the first start is, is awareness. We have to become conscious. So there's, there's a consciousness of thought. There's a, a consciousness of belief systems. There's a consciousness of, of how we're holding our thoughts and our stress and our body. So, you know, there's our, our body, our mind, our breathing, and it's not always fun to become conscious of what we're doing. That's actually making us more negative, um, and, and really stressing ourselves out and feeling more painful. So starting with awareness, writing is a great way to become more aware of what you're thinking, how you're thinking, and then soothe yourself. We all need to learn how to soothe ourselves. Too many people are going to unhealthy ways to soothe themselves, and it's making problems worse, making us feel worse about ourselves. So my tool is always the out-breath. Use your out-breath. When we can slow our, out our, when we can slow our breath rate, we slow our heart rate, and we shift to rest, digest and heal and then that gives us the the mental space to be able to decide what we want to believe about ourselves to to choose what we want to think about our futures so that we can be helpful instead of like unconscious habit being in charge yeah and i think you you just gave everyone permission i think like we don't mean to but as humans it's, it's almost like we need permission and you say rest is going to create so many more great things. It's going to create that self-awareness and that success and confidence and stillness and spirituality and all those things. So if we can remember that, that it's okay to take that time and catch yourself if you're feeling guilty. Why? Why are you feeling guilty when it's replenishing you and refueling you, you know? So Sharon just gave us all permission. <laughs> to not go on a diet and to rest a lot <laughs> play yeah and play <laughs> and and breathe i would love i know that you're mm. such an expert at breathing properly and how to breathe out the stress and and just you know how powerful breath can be can you do a, a little explanation and demonstration for all of us yeah so the first thing that's most important is that there is not one correct breath our bodies breathe better than we do. And breathing is mostly unconscious. So when we try to, when people try to breathe correctly, they tend to overexert themselves and, and that's not what we want to do. So the sound, I'm going to go back to this real gentle sound. And I would say if you can lean back into the back of your chair, that creates space for your lungs, your ribs, and your diaphragm to move freely and easily. Let hold breath out. I like this awe sound. It's, you can barely hear it. It's so subtle. It's so soft. It's so easy. But when you let breath out, Whatever your body and your nervous system needs, it will take care of it for you. You do not need to micromanage your breathing. And if you are micromanaging your breathing, you're probably stressing yourself out even more. When you let the old breath out, you allow the body to respond to the demands of the moment. So if there isn't high demands, you, you'll breathe a little bit and that's okay. Your breathing is more like the waves coming and going, all different sizes, all different speeds, and sometimes barely anything. 
our job is to get out of the way of our body's breathing, to soften, to let go of all the holding and the sucking in and the trying to uh, have perfect posture. Let go. Give yourself space. And your body will breathe in whatever way you need it to. So that's not exactly what you expected. (laughs) (laughs) I also um, would recommend spending some time laying on your back with some support underneath your knees. And then you can put your hands on your belly and just notice how when you lay on your back and maybe even you let yourself feel a little sleepy, every breath is different. Every breath is different. Sometimes there's a bigger breath, a fuller breath, and then there's these little quiet ones. It's responsive. It's dynamic. It's alive. And you don't have to make it perfect. You get to leave yourself alone. And it's amazing how people need to actually train in leaving themselves alone so that they have great presence and and a powerful voice and less stress. I always say I'm going to get a tattoo on my arm that says, leave yourself alone. (laughs) It's like a paradox. (laughs) You're right. (laughs) It really is. So, well, I think that that's probably why, you know, one of the reasons why people work with you and hire you is, is it's like that paradox. Like we need to learn all these techniques, but then we also need to unlearn having to learn. (laughs) Yeah. For more information on Eden, go to EdenSuston.com. For more information on Kim, go to KimLifeCoach.com. Make sure to follow them on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Talk Purpose and Truth Podcast. If you loved this episode, you'll love every episode. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. Thank you for listening.